Threshold signatures are a subset of a broader field of threshold cryptography, which holds incredible promise for elevating cryptocurrency wallet security. It's clear that cryptocurrency thefts are both significant and increasing. Through the end of 2018, more than $1.5 billion worth of cryptocurrency coins were stolen from exchanges since the introduction of crypto more than a decade ago. Even more concerning is the fact that of the $1.5 billion, more than half of that occurred in 2018 alone. If we drill in and take a closer look at the theft landscape in 2018, more than 96% of the losses were from exchanges as opposed to individual privately controlled wallets. And that shouldn't be too surprising because clearly hackers are going to go after the honeypots where the biggest amount of funds are available, and those are the exchanges and the brokers. If we peel that back and look at those losses on a daily basis, we're talking about $2.7 million of losses every single day throughout the year, which was a 13-fold increase over the losses that were experienced in 2017. So clearly there's a need for more effective security. And when we're talking about cryptocurrency security, we're really talking about private key security. Because the private keys are what's used to generate an ECDSA signature, which allows the funds to be withdrawn from a cryptocurrency account. Now, private key security can be implemented with a couple of different options. Single signature is the default mode for most implementations. It's a simple implementation where one approver uses one private key to generate one signature on a transaction record. And this is the default model that's used for most transactions today. It's easy, it's low in cost, but it also provides the lowest levels of security because if the holder of the key gets hacked, their funds are effectively gone. Multisig is an alternative scheme that was specified by the Bitcoin specification back in 2008. And it introduces the idea of having multiple approvers, each with their own private key, to generate their own signature where each approver's signature is recorded as part of the transaction record. Now, multisig is exponentially more secure than a standard single party approval scheme. However, it does introduce some undesirable attributes, primarily associated with the recording of each signature of the approvers as part of the transaction record. Threshold signatures, or threshold SIG, is a new alternative that's only recently become viable to implement. Similar to multisig, it supports multiple approvers, but it does this using one distributed key which generates a single signature on the transaction record. Ultimately, Threshold SIG offers the highest level of security because it provides all of the upsides of multi-SIG without the downsides. Threshold signatures use a technique called multi-party computation, or MPC. An MPC locally generates one key share on each of the approver's devices. The shares are never recombined, they're never in the clear, and an entire key never exists in the system at any time, which obviously makes it more difficult to have key theft. As a multi-party approval scheme, at least M of N shares must be available to generate an ECDSA signature. With threshold SIG, N can be up to 20 parties, and M can be any value between 1 and 20. Threshold SIG also introduces another parameter, where up to T shares may become corrupted and the system will still successfully execute and approve valid transactions. It also provides the ability to regenerate lost key shares and ultimately generate the signature to approve a transaction, even in the presence of a corrupted party. And finally, one of the important differentiators of threshold signatures is the fact that regardless of the number of parties or the number of actual approvers of a transaction, only a single signature is generated. And this results in the highest on-chain efficiency and ultimately the greatest privacy and overall security. Effective implementations of threshold signatures are fast on the order of milliseconds. And asynchronous approvals means that transactions can be approved without requiring all the parties to be online concurrently for every transaction. So let's take a look at a demonstration that illustrates how threshold signatures can materially elevate the overall level of security available for your wallets and the exchange. And to do that, what I've done is I've set up two wallets on my desktop here. One is a CPR threshold SIG wallet, which is implementing a three of three approval scheme, where the end user, the broker, and a trusted third party, all three need to approve the transaction before funds can be withdrawn from the threshold SIG wallet. And having a third party approve the transaction 
creates another opportunity where conventionally the broker has policies which verify the integrity of the end user and the validity of the requested transaction. But in this case, the trusted third party could actually be set up to verify the integrity of the broker and the validity of the transaction that it's approving. And this can mitigate scenarios where, in this example, a broker might get hacked and compromised. But to do this, I've, I've set up a copay wallet on my cell phone, and I'm going to go ahead and open it up, grab that address. And what I'm going to do is just a simple transaction. I'll go ahead and verify the address is the same, and I'm going to spend 0 0.001 for bitcoins to that address just to verify that everything's working. And sure enough, it was accepted. And that's because the end user requested a transaction that fell well within the policies that were defined by both the broker and the trusted third party. And in some cases, the broker may want to set up policies to prevent scenarios where uh, substantial fraud takes place. For example, they might put in a maximum allowed transaction amount. And for illustration purposes, we set this at 101,000 Satoshis. Obviously, that's a very small amount, but for the demo, it works fine. And for this uh, last transaction where we had 0 0.00014 Bitcoins, it fell well within the policy guidelines. And as we saw, the 14,000 Satoshis were sent through uh, but both the broker and the trusted third party. And the transaction was indeed received on my copay wallet. But what if a hacker broke in and somehow defeated the defenses to modify the system to reflect a different amount than the normal maximum? Let's say they set it at 10 million as a relative example for the broker. So maybe they've defeated the system for the broker. They've gone through and uh, they've eliminated the lower level thresholds that were predefined. They've hacked into the wallet for the end user, and they're thinking, great, I've got this. I'm going to go ahead and drain these accounts and send these Bitcoins to my own personal account. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to send almost everything that we have here in this account. 0 0.05 Bitcoin or 5 million Satoshis. And when we hit enter, we immediately receive a message saying the transaction was blocked. Now, what's interesting is if we go into the audit trail, we'll find that the broker, because it had been hacked, it went ahead and approved the 5 million Satoshi transaction. But the trusted third party, because it was an independent party that was still operating with the correct threshold policies, it blocked the transaction. So it's just a, just a simple illustration where having the ability to have more than just two of three parties sign for a transaction and to record only a single signature on the transaction record means you can elevate the overall security of the system without increasing the transaction size or the costs associated with the transactions. So in summary, when it comes to security for cryptocurrency wallets, there's really two different multi-party approval scheme options multi-sig and threshold sig. And clearly, multi-sig is far more well-known because it's been part of the cryptocurrency specifications since 2008. Ironically, the concepts of threshold sig have been with us for a couple of decades, but they've only recently become practical to implement. And that's fantastic because threshold sig is more efficient, more cost-effective, more scalable and more resilient. And collectively, these attributes enable it to be fundamentally more secure than multi-sig. To learn more about threshold signatures, we invite you to visit CPUR at www.cpur.com.